Greetings fellow dungeon delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Gragas, the rabble rouser. Gragas is a happy-go-lucky brewmaster, drunkenly stumbling around the world trying to find the perfect pint of ale. His travels throughout Runeterra brought him to many places, but during an adventure in the Freljord, he stumbled upon a shard of true ice that he found would keep his brew at the perfect serving temperature, as well as imbuing it with some magical properties. He inadvertently brought some measure of peace to the Freljordian tribes on his way to show off his discovery. Ash and the chiefs of two other tribes were squabbling when Gragas arrived. The chiefs started to holler about Gragas' arrival when they found a gut heading to them at high speeds. This set off a massive brawl, until Ash finally calmed everyone down by suggesting a friendly drink. Gragas' brew settled tempers and a peace was brokered. Still not satisfied though, Gragas continued on his journey through Runeterra. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to take a minute and thank our awesome patrons over on Patreon who support us every month. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on and the barrels pouring. One of our rewards for our patrons is monthly homebrewed content. This month's homebrew is the Smuggler's Port, based on Bilgewater. We released last month's homebrew, The Hidden City, onto DM's Guild if you're interested in seeing that. Come join us over on Patreon today for just a dollar to get access to our awesome Discord community where we talk League and D&D &D all day long. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Varian Human. Per usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max constitution and dump charisma. For multi-classing, we're going to have to keep a 13 in dex, wisdom, and intelligence. Our leveling path is going to be levels 1 through 8 in monk, then 12 levels in artificer. Graggy's passive, happy hour, is going to be from restorative reagents. Our Q, barrel roll, is going to come from thunderclap. His W, Drunken Rage, comes from Drunken Technique and Experimental Elixir. Our E, Body Slam, will come from Stunning Strike. And finally, we get our ultimate, Explosive Cask, from Thunder Wave. For race, we're going with Varian Human for a very important starter feat. Varian Humans gain a plus one to two abilities. We'll go with Constitution and Wisdom. We also get a Skill Proficiency. And if you were staring down that belly coming at you at 90 miles an hour, I think you'll see why we're ticking Intimidation here. Our final feature is the free feat which we get to choose. Tavern Brawler is going to give us a few things here. First, we get to bump our con by one. We're proficient with improvised weapons, like our barrel. Our unarmed strikes do 1d4, but that'll be taken care of by our class levels. And finally, whenever we hit with an unarmed strike or our barrel, we can use our bonus action to grapple the target. For background, the obvious choice here was Far Traveler. Gragas has spent his time exploring Runeterra trying to find the ingredients to his perfect brew. This is going to give him proficiencies in Insight and Perception and the All Eyes on You feature. Which basically means you stick out like a sore thumb in a good way and you can leverage that interest to get you and your party into places and bend the ears of fairly important people in town. For stats, we're going with the Standard Array. Roll the barrel if you have to, but keep at least a 13 in Dex, Wisdom, and Intelligence for multi-classing purposes. We're going to max our constitution to resist the potency of our brew, and for some tankiness. We'll take dexterity next to help out our AC, intelligence is next for multi-classing, and after that we'll pick up wisdom for the knowledge gained during his travels. Strength is going to be average, and we'll dump charisma. Alrighty, since we don't need any equipment beyond our trusty barrel, we're going to dive right into the class levels. We're opening off some levels in Monk to flesh out our brawling techniques. Monks have a d8 hit die and give us proficiency with simple weapons, short swords, and two skills. We're going to pick up acrobatics and athletics for our splashy body slam plays. On armored defense is going to give our belly some blubber, turning our AC into 10 plus our dex and wisdom mod. Our final level 1 feature is martial arts. This is going to let us use our dex for the attack and damage rolls and a scaling damage die for our unarmed and monk weapon attacks. It'll also let us make an unarmed strike as a bonus action, as long as we took the attack action this turn. Second level monks gain unarmored movement. This is going to bump our speed by 10 feet, as long as we stay in our loincloth and don't put on a shield. We also get our key, which is a pool of points we can use to perform a few abilities. Each of the abilities I'm about to say costs one key point. Flurry of Blows is going to let us make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action after attacking instead of one. 
patient defense will let us take the dodge action as a bonus action. Step of the wind is going to let us take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action. And also double our jump distance for the turn. So once we get stunning strike, we can step of the wind and do a 100 foot range body slam on the same turn. Level 3 monks unlock deflect missiles and choose their monastic tradition. Deflect missiles is going to let us use our reaction to reduce damage from a ranged weapon attack by 1d10 plus your dex plus your monk level. If you knock the damage to zero, you can spend a key point and yeet that missile right back. For our monastic tradition, make sure you're sitting down for this, but we're going with Way of the Drunken Master. This is going to give us our proficiency bonus with Brewer Supplies and Performance. We also get Drunken Technique. Whenever you use Flurry of Blows, you ignore Opportunity Attacks and gain 10 feet of bonus movement. This should let us rumble, stumble, and bumble our way onto victory. Fourth level monks get the first ability score improvement of the build. As usual, we're going to lay out all of our ASIs here so you can pick and choose as you please. At monk 4, we're going to pick up the tough feat to give us 2 hit points per character level and add some thickness to our boy. At monk 8, we'll pick up magic initiate wizard for our ultimate explosive cask with the thunder wave spell. When you cast thunder wave, each creature within a 15 foot cube has to make a con save or get knocked back 10 feet from you and take 2d8 thunder damage. I'll explain this a little more when we get to our spell storing item. At Artificer 4, we'll round off our Wisdom and Constitution for some AC and HP. At Artificer 8, we'll max our con for just a little more tankiness. And finally, at Artificer 12, we'll bump our Dex 2 points for some Armor class and a boost to our attack and damage rolls. Level 5 Monks gain extra attack, letting us make 2 attacks per attack action instead of 1. And now it's time for the Body Slam with Stunning Strike. Anytime you hit a creature with a melee attack, you can spend a key point to force a con save on it. If it fails, it's stunned until the end of your next turn, which lets us get our stun alt combo. On turn 1, you step of the wind and throw the gut out and smack people in your path, applying stunning strike. On turn 2, you step around them and cast thunder wave, sending them flying to your waiting allies. 6 level monks gain key empowered strikes, making our unarmed strikes magical for overcoming those pesky immunities and resistances. We also bump our unarmored movement speed to 15 feet this level. And finally we get Tipsy Sway, letting us spend only 5 feet of movement to stand up from prone, and we can redirect our enemy's misses. If you spend a key point as a reaction, you can cause that missed attack to hit another creature within 5 feet of you. Level 7 monks pick up Evasion and Stillness of Mind. Evasion is going to help us when dodging those skill shots. Whenever succeeding on a deck save would make you take half damage, you say nah and take none. Also, you only take half damage when you fail those kind of saves. It'll let you stay in mid lane when your enemy mage hits their mid game power spike. Stillness of Mind allows you to spend your action to remove any charmed or frightened effects on you. So basically QSS. Alrighty, we got our drunken brawling down. Now it's time to take our bruise to the next level with some levels in Artificer. Artificers also have a d8 hit die, thankfully, and we pick up proficiencies with light and medium armor, along with thieves and tinkers tools. Speaking of tinker tools, we also get the magical tinkering feature. Long story short, you can imbue magic into a tiny non-magical object and let it do one of a few things. It can shed light, emit a recorded message, emit an odor or non-verbal sound, or make a static visual effect appear. And finally, we get our spell casting which uses our artisan's tools as a magical focus. Since we have our brewer supplies, we can use our barrel as a spellcasting focus, and I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. We're going to pick up a cantrip called Thunderclap, which cast through our barrel will be like your Q barrel roll. This lets you force a con save on all creatures within 5 feet, dealing 1d6 thunder damage if they fail. Second level artificers learn how to infuse items using their artificer infusions. You can apply these infusions at the end of a long rest with restrictions laid out in the Artificer table. The only important Artificer infusion for the build is going to be the spell Refueling Ring, which will let you spend an action to recharge a third level or lower spell slot. Level 3 Artificers choose their Artificer Specialist and gain the right tool for the job. Right tool for the job is going to let us magically create a set of Artisan's tools as long as you spend an hour to do so. For our Artificer Specialist, we'll go with Alchemist to enhance our bruise. This will give us proficiency with alchemist supplies and the experimental elixir feature. 
Whenever you finish a long rest, you can create an experimental elixir that once imbibed makes the drinker roll a d6 to determine the effect gained. I'll quickly go through those options here for you. Healing restores HP equal to 2d4 plus your int mod. Swiftness gives 10 additional movement speed. Resilience gives plus one to AC. Boldness lets you add a d4 to all your attack rolls and saves. Flight gives you a 10 feet flying speed. And finally, Transformation gives you a 10 minute alter self spell. Most importantly though, by spending a spell slot, you can choose the effect you want to create in your elixir. For Drunken Rage, we'll want Boldness, Resilience, and Healing. Level 7 Artificers gain Flash of Genius. This allows you to spend your reaction to add your intelligence mod to a check or saving throw made by you or an ally within 30 feet. You have charges based on your intelligence mod, and they all recharge on a long rest. Level 9 Alchemists gain Restorative Reagents, which is going to be our passive happy hour. Restorative Reagents gives drinkers of your elixirs 2d6 plus your int mod and temporary hit points. And the final level of Artificer to discuss is level 11, where we get Spell Storing Item. Now this is going to rely on a little DM love here, but here's how the feature works. After a long rest, you can touch any item you can use as a spellcasting focus, like the barrel from our brewer supplies, and store a first or second level spell that requires an action to cast. When holding the object, you can use your action to produce the spell's effect. You can do this a number of times equal to your twice your intelligence mod. Now the problems here are obvious. Thunderclap is a cantrip, and Thunderwave comes from a feat. Also, ideally, we could roll the barrel and have the spells emit on arrival. Now to me as a DM, these are both fairly low damage spells, and just for flavor, I don't see the harm in letting it pass, but if your DM disagrees, then you're in kind of pickle. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. Your drinks are going to have people eating out of the palm of your hands, then receiving the palm of your hands if they get a little sassy. We're pretty tanky, with our massive health pool and our monk features giving us effective health through defensive abilities. Now the bad. The main bad part of this build is that it's going to require some flexibility from your DM to get the barrels rolling. It's not the end of the world if they play it at rules as written, but a little give here would make this a ton of fun. Also, we don't really do too much damage. This is going to be mainly flavor, and hopefully you have a lot of fun with that. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in the build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards including access to our Discord community and monthly homebrew releases. We plan on churning out one League Champion build every week. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.